Hey guys, welcome back. On this episode, I'm gonna speak to you guys about how to sell a construction project. My name is Carlos Guerrero, AKA Carlos Your Contractor, and I have 20 years of experience in my belt, and that's why I'm gonna bring you this information so that you guys can learn and avoid mistakes. Let's get started. Rule number one on how to prepare a proposal is you must know the scope of work. Very simple, right? You have to understand the scope of work, but it's not as easy as it sounds because to really understand the scope of work, it takes a lot of time, and it takes certain things that you wanna get before you move to the next step. One of the things that I like to do to understand the scope of work is I like to get a set of plans, maybe construction plans, maybe something that's showing me exactly what needs to be. We're gonna take this project from this to this. Number two, another thing that you need is a lot of communication with a client. You have to understand what the client's wishes are, what they want, what they're trying to accomplish. Because what happens is not a lot of people understand construction and they think that things just get done in a different way or faster and they don't have the experience to really understand how to get something from A through C. So you really wanna have a lot of communication with a client and really ask questions, ask why they're doing this, ask what is the reason behind this. The why is very important because it's different for maybe a homeowner that wants to remodel a house to sell the house or flip the house than it is for a homeowner that wants to live in the house. So there's two huge reasons there and the price will vary between those two clients because one client is gonna go choose the more average materials and the other client is gonna probably choose more of the higher materials because it's for them to enjoy for many years. Another thing that you wanna get from your client is inspirational pictures. Have them send you a few inspirational pictures so you understand the style that they're going for, that look that they're going for. Finally, you have to understand if this project is gonna be with permits and inspections because one thing is to do a project with permits and inspections, another thing is to do a project without permits and inspections which are gonna require more steps, more days of work which is gonna result in a higher price. Well, now that you understand the scope of work, the next step is understanding the job site conditions. You see, there's always gonna be additional stuff that are not gonna be showing on the plans or they're not gonna be something that that client wanted. For example, if you go ahead and do a demolition and there's wires hanging, electrical wires, well, guess what? You're gonna have to relocate those wires that are not showing the plans. Also, if you're gonna be knocking down walls and there's a bearing wall that you didn't know and that bearing wall is not showing the plans, that's also additional work that was not anticipated in the scope of work. In addition to the conditions, you wanna see how the parking is. Do you have to pay for parking? Is the job site easy to access? Or are you working in a building that you're gonna have to go up the elevator and down the elevator? Or is there hours restrictions at the job site. All this information will determine and will change the price of the estimate. Next is basically the schedule. Once you understand the scope of work, once you understand the project's conditions, now you need to understand when is this project really going to take place? Because if somebody wants to do this project a year from now and you want to give them an estimate, you're out of your mind. Because what happens is that prices every month, they change. Labor goes up, materials go up, or maybe they go down, but I haven't seen that in a very long time. So if you give a price too early in the process, you're just shooting yourself in the foot because what's gonna happen is that you give a price too early and when you finally started the construction, you did the demo, you open up the walls. Now, not only that your price was too early and based on six months ago, but now the scope of work has completely changed because now there's more work to do because you didn't anticipate all the extra stuff that were gonna happen. So what I like to do is between three to four weeks before that project schedule to start, that's when I start going and getting the estimates. That's when I start going and doing the job site visit because if I go too early, I'm just lying to the client and I'm lying to myself, which eventually is gonna become just a problem between you and the client. Now, the next step is once you have all this information, now you have to do your takeoff. Your takeoff basically means how much hours is gonna take to do that work in labor and how much it's gonna cost you in material to perform the work. So let's assume we have a cost of $10,000. Now, on top of that cost, what comes next is you have to add your markup. Your markup meaning how much does it cost you to run your business? What is your overhead? And you have to get the percentage and add it to your markup, plus you have to add your profit. So you have your costs, your labor and material costs, and then you have to add your markup and then you add your profit. And that's how you're able to determine how much you should charge the client for that specific job that you're trying to do. Now that you have your costs and you know how much you should be charging the client, the next thing is simple. Now you prepare the proposal. The proposal becomes your scope of work. It becomes a checklist. It becomes a shopping cart. So what you wanna do is you wanna be very detailed on the scope of work and write everything that you're gonna be doing for that particular job. So not that only that you understand what you're doing, but also your client understands what they're doing and if there's more work that comes later you and your client understand that that was not included in the initial proposal this will save you tons of stress not only you but for your client because now you guys are on the same level you guys understand what they're buying you understand what you're offering what you're gonna provide for the project and it just becomes a smoother when you start doing the construction now let me go back let's assume you give the client the proposal now the next step is really negotiate so if you're doing everything right and you do your numbers right when I say negotiate I don't mean lower your price now maybe the client and ask you, oh, can you lower your price?
price. Well, guess what? When you negotiate, you have to negotiate on the scope of work because that's really the only way to lower the price or raise the price. It's simple. The scope of work goes up, price goes up. The scope of work goes down, price goes down. That's what you want to negotiate. Before you even talk about the price, you want to understand the scope of work because what happens a lot of times is that people don't compare apples to apples. So the first thing you want to negotiate is the scope of work. What is exactly you're providing? What's exactly you're doing? Because based on that, you're going to get a price. Now, let's assume you went already over the scope of work. The scope of work is clear, but now they're telling you, well, it's too much. What do you do now? Now you have to educate your clients. You have to make them understand why your price is your price. And you have to compare what is she or he comparing your price to. Are they comparing your price to, number one, the same scope of work? Number two, are they comparing your price versus a handyman versus a professional expert that does the job every day? So you really have to dig deep the onion and really understand what are they comparing the price to? Where are they getting this price from? And really kind of understand and go from there and negotiate and educate your clients so that they understand why your price is your price. Another thing that you have to educate them on. Are you working with a licensed contractor or are you comparing the price to a non-licensed contractor? See, there's a lot of people out there that try to do construction, but they're not licensed. They're not insured or they don't have experience. There's no comparison when it comes to that. And you have to have the ability to negotiate and educate your client so that you could get the project. That's all I have for you guys. Can't stop, won't stop. Thank you for watching. Subscribe and let's go.